Beer 30 Live. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's Beer 30-ish is what we'll call it today. <laughs> uh, this, is Pete. <laughs> this is Pete Wright. I am one quarter of the regular Beer 30 uh, cast because we've had a lousy, lousy, lousy summer. Uh, uh, so I'm it's sitting here with a plague. couple of awesome stand-ins. Right, our regular we have Kurt the Emperor Palpatine Sifford, oh, yeah, uh, standing in for us uh, here. Kurt, welcome back. Thanks. You don't sound very good, man. <laughs> you sound lame. Yeah, I'm really lame today. I'm gonna really up the quality of today's show. That's right. <laughs> well, the bar the bar wasn't that high to begin with. <laughs> and we're also we also have our uh, good friend and colleague Ted Strand, the only one wearing a tie. You, uh, I thought this was a professional. <laughs> You're right. No cameras? Yeah. Oh, just mine. Dang, I yeah. thought we were going to be on TV. No, no, no. Uh, uh, can we talk about your sure. sordid history with us? Sure. Because you, you've been on the show before, but yeah. we couldn't really... I know, I had a, an alias last time. What was it, Dirk Diggler? Uh, no. Jim, Big Jim? Yeah, Big Jim. <laughs> Big Jim. Because yeah. we, were, we were hiding your... Uh, you were on the inaugural show. Yes. Uh, so if any of your bosses are it's listening and can put, show put two and put two on. together, well, it's certainly yeah. the most, you know, it was the last time we had any sort of, uh, any sort of regularity was the first show. And my legs have healed since then. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we are here, we've got just, you know, it's, we are, we have no guests. Everybody else is on vacation out of pocket. We don't even know where they are, uh, but we needed to get a show together. And there's a lot to talk about that we've been missing. Uh, in terms of uh, you know what's been going on with the regular news, so it, it, you know here's what we're, where should we oh, start? Oh, beer! I love beer. Thank you. <laughs> where, oh, and they're delivering beer yes. right here to the table. It's what are you drinking? Fantastic. A nitro Something foamy and dark. Like I don't even taste the alcohol. You're it's drinking so the color black. Oh, it's awesome. That's not Do you even need a beer. Spoon for that? Mm. What it's a, what is that? It's got nitro. It's like an ice cream float. Can I try? Yeah. We're sitting here at uh, at John Barleycorn's McMinimins. Thanks mm. again to them for bringing us beer. That is very nice. What did you nice. order? It's like nitro-ish. It's ni- ni- what is nitro? It's is, like that so, is that a homeopathic? It's like, it's like it's what they give you in dentist's office. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel real good. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. See? Oh, man. Yeah. You mm. can't say that. Wow. It's beer, Pete. Oh, no, yeah. No, you're somebody be, has to. You're supposed to be thanking our sponsors here, man. Oh, I don't know what dude. your problem is. Dude, oh, no, it, it doesn't look like beer. It doesn't <laughs> taste like beer. That's the color black. It's like a beer float. Yeah. God. Yes. Similar to that of ice cream. Down my gullet. Wow, the ass end of sandpaper. That's what that is. <laughs> huh. uh, Have not heard that I'm going to drink before. mine again. Uh, <laughs> Cleanse. All right, so I think we should start with politics, because that's the, that's the big one, right? What poor Senator Craig. <laughs> hey, quit touching my toes, all right? <laughs> Okay. I'm tired of it too. What what's up with that guy? I did first of all. Now I don't, I don't run in the uh, in the airport. Oh uh, my god! I learned so much. Yeah, I don't run in those circles like the too much. the sort of airport kind of. Uh, it's kind of like traveling to a different country. I have more perspective now. That's right. Like what country would do this? We just touched. Food. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Okay, so you, what are you doing? You tap. So you tap. Right, that's what happened. Right, he's in the airport. Is it the hand or the toe? Well, it's the it's the foot, but you you you, you don't tap the other person's foot. You, you tap just your tap. foot up and down. So yeah. I didn't real. I have restless leg syndrome in bathrooms, and who knows how many people I've let on. <laughs> you know, I thought the RPS was bad enough. Oh, uh, RPS. Yeah, restless penis syndrome. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing right about any of that. Okay, so he's so poor Senator Craig from uh, Idaho, the great inland Northwest. Uh, he's in the bathroom, and what? Where was he? He's in. Uh, you know what city he was in when he got caught? Um, some Idaho city. Mm-hmm. Some, okay, yeah. some Idaho Boise. city. Yeah, we're gonna say Boise. We don't know that for sure. Well, we can check our facts, but we probably won't. <laughs> and uh, and he starts tapping because apparently that's a sign when you start doing the tap that. You have interest in an anonymous sexual encounter in the men's bathroom, and then he reached under with his hand. That came second, right? I've heard. Yes. Weren't you like you weren't there? No, I wasn't his aide. 
Uh, and so, uh, uh, are you broadcasting this? Yeah, so I just turned this on on Ustream.tv, and I was about to say onto the microphone. So if you tune in right now, then you'll see us, but then I realize that I'm advertising a live show on a tape broadcast. <laughs> yeah. And that doesn't really work. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. I'm glad you didn't advertise. So <laughs> if, you, uh, if you tune in uh, right now, you'll, <laughs> you'll see nothing. But you'll if see you tuned in a few hours ago. If you turn in right now, <laughs> you'll see a pre-recorded, right? They slave, does it save? Um, no, but I can record little clips. Okay, so we'll record the good stuff. Uh, <coughs> so that's on, where, where is it? Ustream? Ustream.tv, and uh, I don't actually, like, slash Toonsmith's show, maybe, something like that. I don't really know. Okay, well, we'll put a link in the show notes. That'll be good. <laughs> so you tap, and then you reach your hand under, and what are you hoping to grab with yeah. that hand? <laughs> Anybody? I mean, yeah, every I just time that really I really don't to, want to go there with that. Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> but I just try to imagine the mechanics of this, and it's just like, really? Those walls people are with, deep. Well, people with long arms. I suppose. Sort of a self selected Neanderthal. <laughs> but uh, it's just like, I, don't, I really don't know what they're trying to accomplish there because, I mean, they're. Because you sort of have to be double jointed a little bit. Yeah. Well, and, isn't that just to just to meet up with the guy? And well, then you yeah, both maybe you're cruise shaking your hands. To a janitor stall? closet? <laughs> I think that's progress. That's that's maybe, up the ladder. Maybe it's like you grab the guy's hand and pull him under the wall. <laughs> well, okay, so that's what I was thinking this whole time because the, it turns out poor Senator Craig was soliciting an officer supposedly. to finish off of the law, supposedly allegedly. of the law, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, you know the, I'm thinking, listening to the story, thinking, oh my god, I would be so tempted to pull, to yeah. just grab and yank, <laughs> just pull him right off the john. <laughs> <laughs> Get a mop. <laughs> Wait a second. Is it allegedly if you confess to it and well, say he, you're guilty? Well, you know, and then you confess. come back and say you're not guilty? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't understand how that works. <laughs> right, right. I'm not, not guilty, just I only, depraved. I only said I confess. Yeah. <laughs> it's the meta confession. Because it was a little awkward. I confess. I was just hoping that he would take me home. <laughs> Here's the other thing, this cop, I mean, I'm listening to this cop talk, and he's, like, saying things like, Sir, I see this kind of thing every day. And I'm like, oh, my God, how much time are you spending on that toilet? <laughs> well, that was his job, right? I mean, it was, apparently was he, he had... To, no, 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 apparently he, the, he had been uh, informed that uh, there was a lot of illicit activity going on in this area, and so he was there to, f- to try and put, to stamp this out, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so that yeah I mean that, yeah it was his job. But I, I've been in public bathrooms before. I've like never noticed someone tapping their foot like across the boundary divide or any of these things. So, yeah, I, I couldn't help just wondering a little bit like maybe there was something to this entrapment thing. Maybe. Okay, wait a minute. So to, what so what is the story there? There's so now he's claiming entrapment. Well, let's just think. Of, okay, I, I, all right. I'm just I'm going to take you through my mental process here. Oh, but good. yeah, right. so yeah, but Craig was uh, Senator Craig was saying entrapment because I mean you're just thinking. All right, like from his perspective, if his perspective was true, he's sitting there taking a dump, <laughs> and and then you know he's got his his feet wide because he doesn't want his pants to fall down. Which I know I know I'm really stretching here to defend him. And, I don't know why. and he accidentally <laughs> touches feet, which I've just done with Ted like a whole bunch today already. I, but I prefer that. And I but neither of your pants are down <laughs> around your ankles. <laughs> and then, and then, like you're reaching down for some reason to pick up a piece of paper, and then all of a sudden you're in trouble. Oh and, my God! Um, okay, first of all, how many times do you ever reach down to pick up anything on the floor in the bathroom? Like I would never. Yeah, in I, your I, life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you got me. On that one. <laughs> never. Yeah, never. If it falls on the ground, it it's is lost, lost right. to everybody. You know, cell phones, <laughs> yeah. wallets, it's, keys, it's, glasses. It's you don't gone. even touch it. Yeah, you, you know, you know. Actually, what decided it for me though is that because uh, he's talking about this whole story and everything like that that he's trying to put across this thing of like he was just completely unaware. He's just like seen something on the floor to pick it up, and all of a sudden he's in jail. <laughs> he's got handcuffs, uh, and some guys trying to pull hand, his arm around. On the other hand, at the very beginning of the conversation, he said, "You solicited me." Oh, yeah, so which maybe com- it was the cop that which really we should be talking about. It completely about. didn't square with his other, you know, his other defense, his yeah. other story, his Do other Do we know alibi. the history of the police officer? We don't. Nobody's, yeah. You know why? More fun to talk about a senator <laughs> from Idaho. I agree, because that is... Because what else are yeah. you doing in, you know, Coeur d'Alene? 
Not much. <laughs> Potatoes and the no, airport. I, I love uh, Idaho and need to work on the leadership. That's all. God bless Idaho. So what, what exactly was against the law about uh, touching your foot to another guy's foot and putting your hand on the inner side of a divider of a bathroom stall? Oh, man, I don't know. See, that's, that's you whole, make it sound clean. That's the whole other angle of this. It's like, you know, at what point was it actually violating the law? You know what? Clearly we need more facts. You talk amongst yourselves. I'm bringing this up. <laughs> you know, I, 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 can, I can imagine if I was in that situation and, there's, and I was in there taking a leak or well, probably taking a leak and some guy's tapping my foot, he might end up with a little something on his foot. <laughs> <laughs> I need mean, to be honest. <laughs> like, oh. Who's to say that would be against yeah, the law? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is it so wrong? Yeah. Oh, my. So there's Craig Thomas, not the same guy. And I did read an interesting point today about how, like, you know, the whole press conference was about this guy saying, I'm not gay. I never have been gay. And, you know, how all of the kind of out gay politicians out there are just laughing at that because they, yeah. they know all the things that he's not saying. They know that he's not saying, I'm also not bisexual or, <laughs> yeah. you know, I have never had sex with a man, you know, or just because I did this doesn't make me gay. <laughs> or, right. yeah, I, was, I wasn't the one that was queer, you know. <laughs> he, did, you know it was, was just, he didn't say it. It was the other guy. <laughs> yeah. He was the gay one. Right. Hey, actually, you know, in Honduras, and Meg will vouch for me, my wife Megan will vouch for me this. If uh, if you are the receiver of, a, and there's a lot of male to male contacts down there, if you're the receiver, you're not, or you are gay. But if you're the giver, you're not. Oh wow! Yeah. So at one at different nights, you could be in, not gay. In where? In Honduras. In Honduras. Yeah. And any prison across the yeah. country. <laughs> uh, I just thought that was appropriate for the conversation. It, it, it is, and. The, I don't know why you would want to have that associated with you. <laughs> no, dude, seriously, I was in Honduras for like My eight wife years. Was in the Peace Corps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so he was born on My a wife's ranch. Not, gay either, so. <laughs> not a lot of foot tapping that you hear about. Uh, okay, uh, last Tuesday, sex through foot signals. Swiping his hand underneath the partition mm. wall. See, swiping, that's, that's just a word. You don't, why do you say yeah. that, that in a bathroom? No, you don't swipe yeah. in a bathroom ever. Wow. The only thing you should swipe in a bathroom yeah. would be your own ass. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here it is, here it is. The incident began uh -huh. with the senator peering several times through a crack in the door of the cubicle <laughs> used by the yeah, undercover yeah, officer. Like completely gone by this the point. senator then reportedly <laughs> he appeared through a crack. Entered, <laughs> entered the stall and entered the stall to the left and placed his roller bag against the front of the uh, stall door, a move the police report said was intended to block the view from the front of the public toilet. Police report said that uh, soon he was, as soon as he was seated, Mr. Craig began tapping his right foot. This, a fascinated American public is learning, <laughs> is a universal quote, universal signal used by people wishing to engage in lewd conduct. Wow. Not a very good lewd See. Uh, or signal, <laughs> universal signal, because really, nobody knew about this it. This really has me concerned, because I'm going to be up on stage at uh, Tony Starlight's next week for a jazz <laughs> gig playing piano and Don't tapping tap. my foot. <laughs> yeah. They tell you to tap your foot Just when you play the piano. <laughs> it's, the right foot that's it's the right foot, yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh. So, uh, Mr. Okay, wait a minute. So, I think there's more. Once the officer moved his own foot up and down... Okay. He tapped back. Yeah. Mr. Craig touched the side of the policeman's left foot in the gap under the partition. The unfortunate senator also reportedly moved, remo moved his hand under the stall wall several times before getting the shock of his life when the officer put his police identification by the floor so that he could see it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, he was arrested, denied any sexual intent, two months later that he was delivered a guilty plea to the charge of disorderly conduct and was given a suspended 10-day jail sentence and put on unsupervised probation wow. for a year. They're calling this the bathroom bust. Wow. This is from uh, The Independent uh, in the UK. It's good that we have our Idaho senator being talked about. In the UK. In the UK. Yeah, that yeah. is That's awesome. right. That's mm. great. Okay, well, you know, it's it's uh, it, from that straight to my our, our poor friend Ted Haggard. This is a quick story. 
just piqued my interest because, uh, uh, you know, Haggard, remember what happened with him. He was the, uh, the head of the uh, National Association of Evangelicals, not a small group. Mm-hmm. Not a group that looks particularly lightly on uh, sexual indiscretion either, even though m- many of them are dealing with it in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> There's a lot of demons to cast out. A lot of demons to cast out, yeah. So Ted Haggard, president of that, he was head of the New Life Church in Colorado Springs, and he was um, he was caught, or actually it was, a, it was a male prostitute, came forward and said, you know, I spent some quality time with Ted Haggard. We did Talking. some coke. We, uh, you know, he's a good guy, uh, but kind of cheap, you know, whatever. So... So Ted, uh, the repercussions, he, he uh, and this is, this is a thing I have about religious indiscretion in general, which I think is a big deal. So Ted Haggard broke the law, doing drugs with a male prostitute, uh, violated all of the, uh, uh, all of the, uh, the spiritual statutes that he is, stands up to protect as a you know, senior minister of this church, and his punishment was, you know, you're fired, you step down from your thing, and we're going to pay for you to go back to school so you can, you know, go study. And he ended up going back to school to University of Phoenix. <laughs> like the place didn't need any, uh, you know, doesn't, didn't need that kind of help, seriously. Is, is this the guy also the one that went to that two-week uh, cure yourself of being gay camp? Yes. And he got cured. Oh, yeah. So good for him. Mm-hmm. You can cure that. <laughs> you can't oh. cure. It's, it's a disease. Wow. Yeah. It's a social disease. <laughs> it, you know, okay, so here's my question then. Is the bar different for the clergy? For clergy? Clearly. Mm-hmm. I think they're on a closer level to God. So, so that's why they don't need to answer to uh, mortal so, crimes? That's right. I think it's just the bar is different for right wingers. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, here's my theory. Please. Um, we, by which I mean... Us uh, at this table? I don't know. But different people believe different things about hypocrisy. Okay? So people that really think hypocrisy is bad believe that your values should align with your actions. And... For many people, that's a no-brainer, you know, especially people of the liberal persuasion. That is a complete no-brainer. They're like, well, you need to live as you preach, practice okay. as you preach, you know, live in accordance with your values. Et so far, I agree. Um, so and I'm a liberal. For those that perhaps might be more religious, especially if they come from a more conservative background, that can usually correspond with a belief of, you know, an original sin and things like that. And that is the belief that we are all sinners. We are going to stray. This is what our life is like. Our life is not um, a battle of of always being consistent with our beliefs. Our life is a battle to always try to attain becoming consistent with our beliefs. And so in that sense, hypocrisy is not so bad because hypocrisy is instead just a a learning exercise. Right, where you stray from your beliefs because we are all sinners, and this is all part of our process of trying to become less of a sinner, and other people that also believe themselves to naturally be sinners, they are compassionate about this, and <clears throat> so they believe that um, it's just part of the religious process. And so as long as someone has sinned and has been a complete hypocrite and everything, that is okay, as long as they are still holding true to their values. Because they always need something to move beyond. Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you saying there, though, well, that values are the more important than reality to them? When, I mean, okay, you said <laughs> in your, the right-wingers. Like you, you know, Ted. <laughs> I'm not a right-winger. I'm a conservative. You're rightish. <laughs> I'm a little rightish. <laughs> but, so, you know, one, I, I, I hear what you're saying with hypocrisy. But I think that's personal hypocrisy. You can't mm-hmm. say that all right wingers are hypocrites because they don't believe in one thing or another. Like saying the the far left doesn't, you know, everything's okay. Mm-hmm. So then there's no hypocrisy that they can ever have. Oh, there's hypocrisy all over the place. No, I, I know, but I mean, and, and, but I think it's more on a personal level uh-huh. where, you know, it's not a whole class is, you know, I, I would agree that maybe conservatives have. 
in in eyes of the public, we have a little higher standard to follow because you know there's a lot of things behind that that we're standing behind. And if you do fall short, boy, the hammer does come down pretty hard. Right. But it's you know that that's far and few between that everybody out there is you know falling short of what they're doing because they're a right winger. Right. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's you know the hypocrisy with Craig would be that. You know, he's out there preaching family values and, you know, I'm for this, yet I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And so I totally stand behind that. I think he needs to be out as a senator. He is out. So to speak. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really it, though, because, because it seems like, based on a conservative value set, hypocrisy is a big deal. A liberal value set, hypocrisy is not a big deal. Because it's like there's a... There's a but when we know you're going to screw up. It's a really big deal. It is a big deal because hypocrisy is already set up as this big deal. Yeah. You know, if you're going to live by the sword, so to speak, you will die by the sword. But there are just as many people on the left that are falling by the sword. Absolutely. As well as from the right, but it's, I think it's but more it's pronounced not held in up. some degree. Yeah. But it's not held up. As, you know, it's not, well, it, take, it's like example, there's awareness that, you know what, liberals are going to do stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they know they're going to do stupid stuff. We know it's going to happen, and we're going to say sorry and try to move on and learn from it. The conservative value set says, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. People who do do this are bad, and they're going to hell, and, <laughs> and then they turn around and do this, right? Senator I, Craig says, I'm not gay. I've never been gay. And then he goes and taps his foot. It, but it's okay. So that's the thing. I think that in a sense, I was almost arguing the opposite for what you know conservatives, um, their views of hypocrisy versus because um, I think that from the conservative mindset, it's probably more like you know you cannot do this, and then you can't do it, and then defend that you're doing. It. <laughs> I'm really kind of no. You can't do it, and then defend you know others who are doing. Well, isn't that wrong? Sure. I mean, if you're saying you're not going to do that and then you do it, right? Then you shouldn't be. It shouldn't be okay that you did it. We couldn't just walk away. It's like Jeffords in Louisiana during yeah. the hurricane. He had ninety thousand dollars in cash. FBI filmed him taking cash. Mm -hmm. Yet now he's the head of the ethics committee or something like that. Right. I mean, that's you can't reward people for doing stuff. And I think that if you're Preaching one thing and doing another, mm -hmm. then you should be out. Yeah, I mean, I. Oh yeah, I, I mean, mean the, the guy with the Jeffrey is this, this is the guy with the money in his freezer. Yeah, yeah he's a yeah. ridiculous man. And now he's the head of a committee, <laughs> ethics committee, I believe, <laughs> which just didn't kills they, me. Did, didn't they strip him of that? No. I don't, wow. Let's find out. That. But and, and to even top that off, even on the conservative side, since we were in in charge, we had the the Senate. Even this, all the senators, Republican and Democrat, went to his defense because they, the FBI went into his office yeah, and said and that it was all, illegal, or right. which is totally, I, I can't handle either side. Right, exactly, because they were all I'm arguing like, against, like, well, yeah. you know, we all have secrets. Yeah, they were yeah, all kind exactly. of you know, going about their self-interest <laughs> there and not really what so was right. So we can't have a lockbox in our office? <laughs> <laughs> With frozen money? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just think... Do what you say, and if you don't, then you, you, you had your chance. Right. <laughs> well, why, how hard is that, honestly? I don't know, man. Apparently harder than we think. <laughs> I mean, I know you're getting pulled in a thousand different ways, being a senator. You've got all these special interests to deal with. But you know the job going in. It's not like you don't know that. But where does forgiveness kind of figure into that, though? <clears throat> I mean, I think that might be the other part of it, is that you know, from the conservative mindset, at least how it aligns with being more um, traditionally religious, um, forgiveness is kind of, you know, the way out of the um, the original sin thing, you know? You, oh, yeah. You do your penance and then you, and then you um, be forgiven. And so, like, someone who um, goes against their traditional values for an action which is not consistent with that and is hypocritical in a sense. Um, but if they're if they're you know also very religious, then the population that they betrayed might be more apt to for, might be more apt to forgive them as well. 
Whereas on the left side, you know, there's not as much of that you know, religious, at least not as much of a correlation of the religious beliefs to um, defend that or forgive it. Um, and so it's almost as if, I, see, I think that all put together, it can kind of put across the perception that, you know, that this is why people that are you know, on the conservative side, you know, like Senator Craig or whatever, might be able to get away with this stuff, even though it doesn't look like Craig's going to get away with it, but Vitter did. Yeah. You know? Hmm. I mean, it comes back to perception and, you know, forgiveness. Forgiveness is, you know, I I can forgive anybody, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that I'm still going to allow you to be, you know, that my senator... You know, yeah, I'll forgive you as a person, Mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot. You're everybody that you've representative, you've represented, has now been somewhat, you know, shined on what you were actually believing. Mm -hmm. So it goes against everything that you've talked about. Right. So I mean, I think forgiveness, yeah, forgiveness is great, and I and I and I think that there's, it's probably a little less on. I don't know. I was listening to your points about. You know the values and being a conservative, and and it, and it does feel or seem like there can be such a big turn for a conservative because of all the stringent guidelines that they're trying to stand behind. Mm-hmm. And we are all sinners, and it is you know it it can be difficult to follow that line and tow it completely, mm-hmm. and especially you know in this day and age where. You know, a lot of things are, you know, way it, from 20 years ago, the, today is a totally different day. Uh-huh. You wouldn't be talking about half the stuff that you were. Right, right. So, I mean, I think everything's just changing at, you know, lightning speed. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's it's a hard thing to follow. And it's it, it all comes down to principle and drive and, uh-huh. you know, what what is what are your beliefs and how, how are you going to stick to those? Don't right. say them if you're not going to stick to them. Yeah. You know, for example, uh, the Bush administration is having some change going on right now. A little bit. A little bit. Who's the latest to fall? Well, Tony Snow. What's his deal? I don't know. I just he I heard a little a... snippet that he's uh, he's out, he's out. He's going to leave on the 14th, and don't know why, but I'm assuming because there's probably not going to get a whole lot done in the next year. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a tough haul for Tony. He went through another bout of cancer that. That uh, he was fighting off, so, and he'd had it once before, and I couldn't imagine being in that spot, like, especially with Bush being <laughs> being in that spot. You know, that's a because <laughs> he's a good spokesperson, but when you get Bush saying anything behind the scenes, and then you're saying something, and it's totally different, it's never good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think Tony Snow had a problem coming into the position. I don't think anybody really trusted him coming into it. Really? Uh, what do you think his motives were before coming into it? Oh no! I mean, it was it was it was a excellent career move for him. But in terms of the position that he took, I don't know that people necessarily look at him and say, "Dude, I trust that guy," because he was a puppet before he started the you know when he was a journalist, uh, and so. Uh, you know, for him to, I, I think the bigger problem was that, you know, he was a, he was sort of a lame duck sport spokesperson. Like, he, you know, he, he's got no, uh, he, he had no real backing from, you know, uh, from the press corps. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. But he's gone. But he's less, to, he's, he's uh, let's see, Bush says, I sadly accepted his desire to leave the White House. Uh, you know, he's only been in there since, what, spring 06? I mean, it's been... It's been longer than 06, hasn't it? Mm-mm. Really? No. no. I heard no. that it was a financial thing, too. I mean, he was making a lot more money yeah, exactly. where he was before the press thing. I'm sure. And spokesmen, all the salaries are set, and I think it's only yeah. like 160 grand a year or something like that. Yeah, that'll hurt. But if you got a lifestyle that is based off of more than that, you know, I think he. I shift. think he became more of a... I don't think he was a puppet before he went in there. I think he definitely ended up being that, though, after he was in there. You don't think he was a puppet before that? No, I thought I thought he was a pretty good. I don't remember what he really did before that. He was a Fox he News talk show. Folks, talk yeah, show, talk show. Kinda. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right, Fox News. So that's why you like him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, roll your eyes at me. You know it's true. <laughs> all right, Mr. ABC, NBC, mm. CBS, MSNBC. I'm, I'm all I'm all BBC and Al Jazeera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he is the. Uh, 
uh, you know, he's the, just the next in the list of all. Today actually yeah. was a very special day because it was Carl Rove's last day. Today? Today. Mm. Little Rove mm. stepping out of, of the... Now, you were saying before that, that somebody... Who is uh, it? Uh, the uh, punditry is saying that it's, more, no, it it's worse without... It was uh, uh, what is it, Catherine McKinney? Is it? I don't I think I'm missing her first name. Mm. She's a senator or a congressperson. But she was saying that he's going to be more deadly outside of the, the house than inside. How is that so? How is that even remotely possible? He's got free reign now. Free Fair reign? Now. He ran the government. He's got a new campaign to hook up with, too, if he wants to do that. Yeah. And that's kind of where his strengths kind of started at. Was campaign, initial yeah. campaign management. But the other thing I heard was that, um, I mean, Gonzalez, he's oh, leaving as well. Oh, sure. He's, he left, too. Right. And so... But the rumors and the buzzing are that, you know, Gonzalez and Rove, I mean, that they're all kind of sort of hooked together and interrelated in this, you know, this whole um, district attorney firing uh, thing that mm-hmm. has kind of been all over the nation. And, uh, I mean, there's even theories that... Um, what are your thoughts of that? Huh? If the president can fire anybody at any time, what is the big deal? Clinton came in, wiped out the whole thing, 90-some... Uh, Oh, judges. we'll have to fact check that. It's, you know, no, it I, is. I remember something about that, but it's, I remember there being But it was at the beginning of the too. term. And now when Bush does it midterm and fires eight, it's all hell to pay. I don't know. I just find that a little crazy. Bush can fire you for wearing a blue shirt on a green shirt day. Clinton mm-hmm. fired 93. Mm-hmm. 93 what? Hang on, that was, that's just the Google <laughs> snippet. It doesn't mm-hmm. tell me anymore. 93, I think it's justices. Think was, it, was it actual district attorneys, people that um, make okay. the Okay, Bush's 8 versus indict. Clinton's 93. The March 13th Washington Post <clears throat> erupted to the front page with a revelation that the White House played a role in the dismissal of eight U.S. attorneys. Firings had genesis in White House, screamed the headline... Documents showed back in 2005, White House Harriet My- White House Counsel Harriet Myers recommended the idea to the Justi- Justice Department that all 93 U.S. attorneys be replaced. Instead, the Bush team dismissed only eight. What about Clinton, though? That was Clinton. That was Clinton. Harriet Myers was Clinton. Harriet Myers. Yeah, Harriet was under Clinton. Harriet Myers was the um, under Bush, the one that was almost appointed to the Supreme Court. She got moved to that with Bush. But she was under Clinton during the ninety three. She was White House counsel. Oh no, no, that you're right. right. That, oh, I'm, that? That's the wrong. That's the wrong date. It was two thousand five that White House counsel Harriet Myers recommended the idea to the Justice Department. So she said eight that Bush should fire okay. all ninety three. Oh, okay. But it was back in let's see. Clinton's brand new attorney J- Janet Reno was Clinton. Janet Reno. And right. let me see. Uh, oh, Janet Reno demanded resignations from all ninety three U.S. attorneys on March twenty fourth, right. ninety three. And huh. they did that, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm still reading. Uh, attorney, attorney, brand new attorney, demanded resignations from all 93, yeah. Well, I have no idea. I know. What do you say to that, big chat? <laughs> nothing. You got nothing. You and your liberal media. <laughs> you and your daily codes. <laughs> Well, the, the, the point that I was getting to is that there was something about Rove and Gonzalez being interlinked there somehow. That it was Rove who recommended Gonzalez firing. And so it was actually arranged that, you know, Rove leave first and then Gonzalez and not the other <laughs> way around because otherwise it would have looked worse or something. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't the, doubt that. The worst thing Bush should have done was not back. Gonzalez, when he came out there and fired the eight. Wait, you're saying Bush he should have backed Gonzalez well, more? Yeah, he should have said, you know, it was my decision, mm-hmm. instead of leaving him out to hang in the wind and just get bludgeoned by everybody that came through. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's if, true. If he's gonna if he's gonna stand by it, then stand by it. Yeah, there's, there's morals. Let's go back to principles. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I don't agree with that at all. I think that I think one you can get fired in being the president. You can fire anybody you want. Period, for no matter what, and so him firing the eight, he should have stood behind Ro or Gonzalez is saying that he's going to be up there, and Gonzalez should have said the president fired him. Not here's why, and 
I think that just drawing it out. Yeah. What about it being for performance reasons as opposed to political reasons? <clears throat> and do you would think it would have been it, better if it would have been strictly do you think political it, it, it just doesn't really matter that it should be the president can just for, fire for political reasons? I think at any time. Yeah, well, I think at any time. I mean, when you're firing all 93, mm-hmm. and what is that? Is that mm-hmm. performance? Do you know how well they perform the day you get in there to fire all 93? Or is it because it's political. I don't know the circumstances behind what the Reno and Clinton arrangement was. I know that the accusation against Eldorado Gonzalez was that he said that it was for performance reasons yeah, when after they political. did the investigation they, and they find that it wasn't for performance reasons. I think it, either one, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Hmm. I, mean, I, I mean, if you're going to take, the, if, if that's the standard, if, if Clinton set the standard, then it shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. I agree that it should be, like me personally, it should be performance, not mm-hmm. political. Mm-hmm. If they're not doing, you know, what it what it is they're supposed to be doing, if they're not sending away people that are child molesters or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're not following the lines, then mm-hmm. we don't need that. Because there, there were, some of the judges were not, um, uh, or the attorneys... Uh, weren't prosecuting weren't the prosecuting, cases that they yeah, on a federal level. Exactly. More child molesters, I keep your job. I more, yeah. That's the equation. Child molesters, okay. Everybody else, you're going down. You're, you're going out. up the river. Yeah. So we don't work on a quota, yeah. really. Yeah, exactly. Just a child molester bar. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, okay. Well, we got to talk about tech stuff now. Because uh, big news. you all, Everybody here has bought shows from iTunes, right? Yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hello, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. I so, can't wait. When does it start again? Irrelevant. It's an NBC show. <laughs> In fact, all last season I bought Heroes episode off of NBC every week because every... it conflicted with one of my other Why shows. Why did you buy it off NBC? Because it conflicted with something else. I know, but you can, go and down- oh, okay. yeah. you can go and download it right straight from NBC for nothing. I yeah. like having it on my iPod. Me yeah. too. All right. Uh-huh. I don't want to sit there and watch it on the computer. I want it on my iPhone. All right. Well, you guys have the cool iPhones. I don't. Not any, not anymore. As of today, uh, NBC has announced that they are stupid, <laughs> and they have, they went to Apple and said, "You know what? We've decided this has worked really well, so we would like to start charging four ninety nine instead wow. of two ninety nine, or, or uh, one, instead of one ninety nine, and we would like to start bundling shows together uh, so that we can, you know, sell a The Office with a My Name Is Earl or." Uh, force you to buy shows that may be underperforming in order to help. Uh, Do you know what percentage they made off that? NBC off Apple Tint or iTunes? No. I know that for, for Apple it was conflicting yeah. reports between 30 and 40 percent mm-hmm. of, of the shows that were sold from iTunes came from NBC or an NBC studio. But now we have left, you know, ABC, NBC, Fox, CW, and some 50 other cable networks on that iTunes. watches. Exclusive <laughs> of NBC mm-hmm. and sci-fi. You know, I mean, that's just ridiculous. Mm. Sci-fi's not on Does sci-fi, sci-fi go an, too? No, sci-fi's an NBC uh, station. Oh, it's an wow. NBC property. Good. So it's not just NBC, the network. It's, uh, it's the associated NBC properties. I'll tell you what I think. I think it's an NBC Universal thing. Mm. Because NBC and Universal are in bed mm. on so many projects uh, at the corporate level. And Universal just announced that, you know what, we don't like Apple, we don't like Steve Jobs having this much power in the industry. So we're going to go off contract with them and sell all of our music, the Universal Music. And Universal is the largest library of music on iTunes in an at-will state. So no contract, it also means they can, they can say, you know, this top performing artist, we're going to take them off of iTunes and put them on Rhapsody, uh, you know, or Napster or some other. Those guys are geniuses. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, it is so ridiculous that <laughs> the tech-savvy consumer uh, has to suffer because these idiots can't keep it in It feels like pants, we just went back know? like five years. It does, it does. They're idiots. They're idiots to not want to work this out. Uh, and I'll tell you, for me... I don't, if it's not on iTunes, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it because it's not convenient for me. I think it negatively affects Apple more than the Universal thing did. Just only because yes. when I go to search for music, I search for music, and then if it's not there, it's not there. I'm not aware of what record label artists right. are with Universal. With, with the Columbia acceptance of EMI. Um, Talk about that. But, you know, on NBC, I'm very much aware of which shows are on NBC and which ones aren't. And so it's got me thinking, well, what am I going to do about Heroes? God, that really sucks. And but you know, overall, you though... You buy the disc set. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's it. But at the end of it all, like, I, I think we're in an era where, where that whole mindset is changing. Like, mm-hmm. it is for us. Uh, like, it's a big deal because we know, because we still sort of associate shows with networks. Mm-hmm. But now, if I discover a new show on iTunes, for example, um, uh, Damages. That's mm-hmm. one that I discovered. The new Glenn Close show. It's mm-hmm. on. It turns out it's on FX, which I don't get anyway because we don't have that cable channel. But, but it is a great show. Discovered it on iTunes. Had no interest at all of trying to find it on television and tune in for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just buy it. Mm-hmm. I have. I, I don't. I no longer associate content with distribution. Well, plus mm-hmm. you have your TiVo, which does that as well. That's right. But you know how many times I've turned it on lately? I mean. I just hardly turn it on anymore. Even the TiVo? Even the TiVo. Really? Yeah. I mean, the shows we watch, we watch a lot of movies. They're all off the computer through through uh, Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Through your towers. Through the Tower of, <laughs> tower of Babel. And I, uh, but, but I just, you know, I find that the shows I watch are the shows that I, I purchase through iTunes. I buy a season pass. I just know it's there. I don't yeah. have to worry about it. I can take it anywhere. That's wild. Because it's just funny because you can kind of see how this is all going to sort of moderate or normalize over the next couple of years anyway because if you think about you know a show being on iTunes versus something being on Rhapsody or something being on something else those are delivery mechanisms mm-hmm. those are just delivery mechanisms right. they're not actually where the show is when you're watching it usually you know, that's you're right you're not watching it from the music store so unless you're NBC you're watching it off their website which mm-hmm. is ridiculous and so there are going to be more services in the future like you might there might be some kind of TiVo esque kind of box that is just going to have a subscription to Rhapsody and iTunes or maybe whatever other private subscriptions, NBC or whatever. So you sign up for those delivery mechanisms you want to be signed up for, like HBO or Showtime or whatever. And so it's just going to end up being TV again. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I want to watch Heroes. You just go to the same device yeah. and yeah. you sign up what you need to sign up for and you watch the show. Yeah. Um, you know, I think... I think we all agree that NBC is making some really poor judgments here. Yeah, it's asinine. But <laughs> last, this week's episode of Last Comic Standing, you have to see it. It is so funny. Is, I, don't know. I didn't see it. Is this going to make oh, any sense? Yeah, it, but it just has to go with NBC going. And, yeah. But it's, it's really funny. So <laughs> Lavelle, the, the big 400 pound black guy, is the funniest man on the planet. You He's heard it here guy. first. Lavelle, 400 pound black guy, funny guy. Uh, it gets to this whole issue of lock in, right? Which is the same issue Apple's dealing with with the iPhone right now, right? Because they signed, or they, in order to get the deal that they wanted and get the partnership with the network, they signed this contract, which is a five year exclusive contract with, uh, with AT&T. Did you forget how to drink? Ted's spilling all over. Wow, that's loud, too. Oh, that was beer in the microphone. Nice. Looks good on that it tie. Off. It's all right. Uh, so they signed this five-year contract with AT and T. So if you here two four, if you wanted to to have an iPhone, you'd have to switch to AT and T. Who are you? You're T Mobile, right? Verizon. Verizon. You couldn't have it anyway. But oh, that's nice. Exclude me. Yeah. But uh, this and over the last two weeks, three different groups have figured out how to unlock the iPhone and are preparing. And two of them are preparing uh, uh, commercial applications to allow people to unlock their iPhones. Meaning you can put your T-Mobile SIM card in your iPhone and get service. The only thing you lose, I think, is, is visual voicemail because that's network dependent. But everything else works. I think that was something you were doing prior to when it was not well, popular. Well, because, because it's, it's technically legal <laughs> to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, it is, uh, but it's illegal to make a profit from it. And that's the problem that these companies are having, that the AT&T attorneys are saying, you do whatever you damn well please, but as soon as you sell it and make a buck off this process, we're going to come after you with everything we've got. And so, you know, they're trying to figure out how to, how to do this. And of course, these guys, they want to make a buck. They don't want to just put it out in the world and, and let the world benefit from having this. You know, it's an interesting thing, this whole lock-in piece, because Apple, it turns out, uh, is making a lot of money off of off of their relationship because for the first time this Apple as a hardware provider makes a cut of of not just the uh, they don't not just the hardware they make a cut off of the subscription 
cost. So they make, I think what I've heard from, uh, let's credit to Scott Bourne off of uh, Mac Break Weekly this week, is 10 bucks. 10 bucks per month per user. Wow. You know, over the length of a two-year contract? Mm-hmm. What is that, about 1500 bucks? <laughs> it's like $24 million for no, per aggregate, person, for person. Two exactly. Yeah. Two-year contract. So it's, it, is a, it, it is not insignificant, uh, not insignificant uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. for Apple to lose this. And, and I have to believe that at some point, uh, you know, Apple's going to have to come out with a fix to, to get this... Um, uh, to get this straightened out, because I can't, I can't believe that AT and T would want to see this happen. I mean, they've got a five-year lock-in, and they figured it out in three months. Yeah. How to unlock it? <laughs> this thing gets in the wild. It's, it's, it is also non-trivial for business users who want to be able to use their current network. I mean, this is something that I would imagine more than just the geek elite would want to use. <clears throat> you guys have no comment on this at all. Do you? I think Kurt just went to sleep. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all sorts of different iPhone-related things, mainly just that I really want to have more games on mine. That's what you were thinking while I was talking about this highly political issue? The issue of lock-in you know, in an era an of unlocking I don't know relationships? What you guys are talking about. Yeah, you need to get one is the problem, and you can join us. And you were talking about games? I want more stuff on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is a lead balloon topic with you guys. I want more stuff. Good lord! Well, you can get ringtones. I, I think you should be able to open it up to all the platforms. I think you should too. I you think get it was different a... coverage, like like yeah. me with Verizon. I can get phone calls all the way out in the wilderness while I'm riding my bike. Mm-hmm. My friend who has T-Mobile, nothing outside of Hood River. Right. I'm in the mountains. Everywhere. Yeah. Verizon's got good coverage. I think AT and T has good coverage too. I don't know that it's it's that great outside of the metro area. Although we were at a campsite two weeks ago, sitting in the middle of the woods by a lake with a campfire, (laughs) I had some of the best coverage I've ever had on my iPhone. On the internet, email, everything. And I didn't have any coverage. (laughs) I kind of moved beyond just the iPhone thing. I mean, I'm really thinking about these cards that you can plug into your laptop that give you high speed wireless access wherever you go. Like DSL speed or yeah, like or EVDO, mm-hmm. Verizon Sprint. Right, right. I was um, <clears throat> I was watching online. You know, I just, I Justine. Yeah. Ridiculously hot, like annoyingly hot, twenty three year old. You know, spends far too much energy making herself hot. She does. She is quite attractive, and she's the one who is who got the three hundred page iPhone bill. Right, right. That's In a other, box. That's the other thing she's known for. I'm probably making enemies here, but. I was She's watching for being hot in a box. I was watching her show yesterday, which is completely boring. But you know, you go there and there are like 560 other people watching it. And they're all like in the chat room going, "Why am I watching this?" <laughs> But so she's like sitting in her Because she's hot. <laughs> See, that reason right there is why we don't have a chat room. Because we are not hot and we're boring. But she's got, she's like sitting there. It's like pointing at her. She's sitting in her office chair. And then she looks up at the camera and and she's going, okay, I seriously got to get out of here. And she grabs the camera and shoves it in her purse, and it's peeking out of the purse, and she leaves the room, holding her purse, walking down the hallway out to her car. And the and camera is in the back. It's still streaming. <laughs> You're still watching the whole thing. I was, I was just blown away. And it's because I find out that she's, like, got this little camera hooked up to some kind of low-profile bio thing that... You could close the lid, but it'll still, you know, run and broadcast and everything through this little car that she's got plugged into this thing. And all she has to do is just shove it in her laptop. And she gets in the car, and then she grabs the camera and snatches it on her dashboard. And it's looking at her while she's driving to go to Best Buy or whatever. And then she goes, she goes to Best Buy, and she what rips it back off the dashboard. And she's kind of putting it her, and it's like... Well, it's a social experiment, right? I mean, she's been doing this for a long time. Yeah, I don't really care about her. I just thought it was so, like, technically so cool. <laughs> it's so cool that she can do it. Yeah. I mean, it's like I could go gig, and I could like have my little laptop, and I could you know slam this thing on the grand piano, and 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 record you and the band doing mm-hmm. your thing, streaming it. Uh huh. Very excited about that next Friday. Oh That's yeah. That's true. Yeah. Here's a here's a uh, what's up with Kurt. And Kurt is a piano and vocals, part time vocals, right? Yeah. Some some vocals ish for uh, Deja Nu. Playing piano and jazz stuff. It's a nine piece uh, jazz piece, band, eight piece. Eight piece uh, well, I'll be combo. there. So 
yeah. just standing next to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, their next gig uh, is at Tony Starlights in Tony Portland. Tony Starlights is a very nice little kind of retro supper club that is uh, based in the gateway to the Hollywood District in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it's on 37th and Sandy or so on Friday night, September 7th, starting at 8 o'clock. We have a gig. This is our second time back there. He actually much, invited back. Yeah, That's he important. very much enjoyed us last time. Yeah. He said that we were, quote, a gas. A gas. <laughs> 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 and very much what his venue needed. And uh, so... We're going back there, doing pretty much the same show as uh, last time, but uh, we're starting to introduce some new repertoire. There's a chance that I might even be up there standing up singing in front of the band, Ooh, separate from the piano. Check you yes. out. So, we'll see. You're a regular Harry Connick. And you get to come and watch me crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there dining at 7, ready for the show at 8. Very excited about that. So, um, come out, make reservations first for these, uh, apparently, according to Tony. Called and talk to Tony. TonyStarlights.com. These, uh, yeah, TonyStarlights.com. These uh, Friday night, Saturday night shows require reservations. Uh, but the rest of the week, you can pretty much go in anytime you need to. Good place. Looking forward to it. Uh, do we have other news? Do you have any news, Ted? I mean, you... I think we pretty much... Uh... Do you have anything else to say about you? Where can we find you? Out on the streets, driving around. Corners, yeah. Playgrounds. <laughs> I see kids a lot. That's right, a lot of kids. <laughs> uh, you can find me now at fifthandmain.com uh, or, of course, beer30live.com, uh, where this show will be posted. If you're listening to it, it's already posted. Uh, I'll get it up there tonight. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Don't forget to edit a little bit of that out. All the, the you parts? Part, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Exigenesis. <laughs> uh, we, uh, I think we're done, right? I think Pete, we're done. thanks for having me. Guys, thank you so much for Absolutely. coming out and, and dining with me and uh, talking for a little bit. This has been a joy, a treat, a gas. Cheers. Until next week, we are uh, out here. We're out. Yeah, we got to talk about that. The bush. Uh, what's it called when everybody leaves? Exitism. 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 Exitentialism. Okay, you guys are not helpful <laughs> or smart. <laughs> uh.